Here's the big breaking story from the post millennial. Jack Smith files superseding indictment against Trump in January 6 case. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, a guy who uh, was already ruled to have no authority to bring uh, one case against Donald Trump now because of the Supreme Court saying that uh, the president has immunity when it per- as it pertains to official duties. Jack Smith has filed a superseding indictment against Trump, basically bypassing or attempting to bypass the SCOTUS ruling. This is insane. Postman reports a Washington, D.C. grand jury on Tuesday returned a superseding indictment in the January 6th case against Trump, charging him with the same four counts he had been charged with over one year prior by a different grand jury. The 36 page superseding indictment charges Trump with conspiracy to defraud the United States, conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding, obstruction of an attempt, obstruction of and attempt to obstruct an official proceeding and conspiracy against rights. In a court filing, special counsel Jack Smith, uh, his office wrote, that the superseding indictment was presented to a new grand jury that had not previously heard evidence in this case and reflects the government's efforts to respect and implement the Supreme Court's holdings and remand instructions in Trump v. United States. Holy crap, they even admit this is what they're doing and why they're doing it. Instead of acknowledging maybe we can't bring these charges against Trump, it's uh, no, because of what they said, we respect that and we're going to charge him again. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, they even said the defendant had no official responsibilities related to the certification proceeding, but he did have a personal interest as a candidate being named the winner of the election. So that's how they say that, uh, you know, the immunity ruling doesn't apply here. I mean, you have Jack Smith, right? You have one job, which is to get Trump. So I guess if you have nothing else to do with your time, of course, you would try again. You don't want to be a failure at this, you know, terrible, terrible position you found yourself in. Yeah. And it's really an example of writing the rules kind of as you go along, because the Supreme Court, according to the civics lesson I got as a kid, is supposed to be the highest court in the land. And for me as an American, I just feel like it's very depressing that our democracy is just being it's been made into a joke i think this is the kind of news that democratic insiders or liberals sitting in coastal cities across the country get really giddy about when they hear they're like "Ooh, they're going after him but the rest of the world honestly looks at us like like as if we've taken all of that those ideals that we preach and ripped it up lit it on fire. And it definitely makes it seem as though we have no leg to stand on when it comes to one of the major issues that I'm interested in, which is regime change. You know, we constantly are running around the world saying that these other countries are undemocratic or not abiding by the rights and ideals that we hold true. And now it shows it just shows the rest of the world, demonstrates the rest of the world that we have no authority to speak on those issues. You've actually put me in a good mood about this now because you're right. You know, uh, around the world, the U.S. is like, uh, we have to uh, remove Assad from power. It's our responsibility to be involved in all of these wars. Ukraine, oh, we have to send all of our money in billions, hundreds of billions of dollars. Oh, boy, better send all our money to Israel next. And now all these other countries are just like, yeah, the U.S. is full of it. Yeah. And so, look, they, you know, I certainly think it's a, a, a smear on the reputation of a country that is reputation is so smeared. It's hard to see what it is. It used to be, but uh, at least the military industrial complex and the warmongers can no longer uh, uh, pretend except to their cult members who will just keep waving the flag and voting for their garbage. Yeah. And on on the issue of uh, just how the world's looking at us, I actually I, I, I put in the afterword of my book when when the Stormy Daniels indictment came down, I think it was Nayib Bukele, the president of El Salvador, tweeted like the, UNE- the U.S. cannot mm-hmm. talk about the weaponization of the judicial system or g- dictatorships abroad anymore. And it's weird. Think about being, uh, you know, in any country around the world, you're looking at the U.S. and thinking the first U.S. president to be indicted on any charges, period, is Donald Trump <laughs> before we went after George W. Bush or any of the other major actual criminals that and George W. Bush basically his administration lied to the United Nations about uh, weapons in Iraq in order to start a war there when did that's you don't get prosecuted for that when did the uh, criminal indict like or when did the criminal uh, conspiracy take over like the the United States wasn't always being ruled by interventionist warmongers Mm -hmm. but I have to imagine it was sometime after World War II you think liberal economic order, the, the what is it? The yeah. Council on Foreign Relations talks about how after World War Two, European allies, the United States decided that we we're going to create a global structure for how we make everything operate. Yeah. And since then, it's just been like, well, we don't need to declare war anymore. We're just going to go do it. Is it? Yeah. I mean, that that happened, too, with um, 
what was it with the desert storm and the Congress was basically like, oh, go ahead, president, do whatever you want. And then you had the Patriot Act and you had this continuous seeding of the people's authority and power to the executive branch. Right. The expansion of the federal government is probably the biggest factor in, in all of this. Yeah, all of these bloated agencies. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's the justification of, well, they have an obligation. I refer to this a lot, but the Secretary of State of Maine, when she was said, I'm not going to put Trump on the ballot because I have an obligation to the country. Ma'am, you're in charge of Maine. And Trump at that point had not been convicted of anything. I mean, right. It was real She was teaming up with co- Colorado. Right. Trying to do that. I Which, think- of course, that effort in Colorado was led by a not-for-profit out of D. DC mm-hmm. that hated Trump. That was and like it's that DC point. nonprofit has led it in it yes. led these efforts in multiple states. Yes. Like, it's interesting, and I know you live in DC, but it's interesting that the expansion of the federal government and the uh, supporting economy in DC is really what's sort of colluding to keep can keep these uh, movements mm-hmm. in motion. Why do, how about we look into uh, Loudoun County, Virginia, and what the uh, average job there is? Yeah. I think. I, 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 there's probably some jurisdictions of the planet that have very, very, very high net worth. But I think on average, Loudoun County has the highest in the world. Mm-hmm. I could it, it could be wrong. I mean, maybe Macau or something or Hong Kong. But in the United States, Loudoun County has the highest median income. So, again, you go to Malibu and you might find ultra wealthy individuals. But there's a lot of, you know, day laborers and a lot of, um, you know, like regular, it's more of a gradient in terms of yeah, like, gradient. Loudoun County, everyone yeah, it's average. Loudoun County. That yeah, is, that's it's like one hundred and fifty thousand per family. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's followed by Falls Church, Virginia. Yep. Chevy There's Chase also Arlington there. County, Virginia. I wonder what there. these people do. Stafford County, Fairfax County. I mean, Virginia has a lot. And uh, you know, it's interesting. I would assume that a lot of these people are the ones that are cheering on the indictment of Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I passed uh, through here, the Loudoun County on the way. It was all Harris Wall signs. But you'd be surprised, actually. It's 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 not so cut and dry. There are a lot of people in, in Loudoun County across the board who are moderates, who are sick of what the, the establishment uniparty has been doing. And, you know, look, the neocons and the, and the, and the neoliberals, the Democratic Party— they, they, they formed their unholy alliance because of people like Donald Trump. Bernie Sanders joined them, so that's unfortunate. But uh, there are a lot of people out here that I'm, I'm they're, they're fans. And like, we're, we're 30 seconds away from Loudoun County. Yeah. So we, we show up and, you know, you'd be surprised that the people who live here. But I'd have to imagine a lot of them are lobbyists. A lot of them represent... Um, you know, military interests and, and, and things like that intervention. Well, interests. Northern Virginia, from what I know about it, really developed because of the expansion of the federal government. And again, the economy that goes with that, meaning lobbyists or different special interest groups that are headquartered in D.C. because it's commutable. Yeah. And I think, you know, maybe that's not horrible, right? Rural rural states need some kind of um, expansion of, of jobs. On the mm-hmm. other hand, if you have a concentration of elite people who suddenly all think and think the same way, I, I, I can only imagine that someone in that group is going to say, well, we really know what's best for the country. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think that that it also depends on what exactly is driving that expansion. And it's clear if you drive through Northern Virginia now that it's the military industrial complex. And yeah, my my husband always calls it the necro economy. That's basically what it is. You just see one military contractor or spying contractor after the other. But to your original question of when all of this began, I sometimes think that it was actually first 1913 establishment of the Federal Reserve, yep. handing our country over to a banking cartel that then got us involved in World War One. I. I think that was the inception of that unipolar global world that was then born through the process of World War Two. I think if the U.S. hadn't intervened in World War One and hadn't, you know, sacrificed an entire generation of Americans, the entire graduating class of Princeton basically died fighting that war for France and Britain when I thought we actually fought a war to be independent from Europe. I think that whole that network of of and, and that that idea that the United States is tied to Europe somehow in this transatlantic relationship that came through. Yeah. First, the creation yep. of the Fed and then World War One. That's really when. The, the promise of the United States, I think, fell apart. I was thinking that. I was thinking that. And I want to, I, I, Ian's not here, so I'm going to say this next bit in, in honor of him. But when you mentioned the necro economy, I love that because uh, DC is a swamp, mm-hmm. and literally is a swamp. And for those that play Magic the Gathering, swamps represent necromancy and evil. And I think it's just fitting. I wonder if the people who made that game were like, what what kind of terrain could we use to represent evil, malice, and death, and, and propping up death? It's like in the never-ending death. story. It's like, uh, I don't know, DC does that. What's DC? Swamp? Mm-hmm. Oh, we'll do swamps. Yeah, let's do there that. There you go.
Uh, let me let me let me pull this up from Nicole Shannon too because she made a statement on the this indictment. Was a, this was a great statement. Shannon says, "I'll admit I used to kind of roll my eyes when people claimed that President Trump was being persecuted. I was looking at it through the distorted filter of the media. Well, I just completed my first cross examination of our second New York New York ballot access case, where the DNC aligned PAC attorneys questioned me like a criminal. Okay, I get it now." Our justice system is clearly being co-opted and abused by nefarious people with malevolent political agendas. And then she posted the clip where they bring up the uh, indictment against Donald Trump. We do have major breaking news. Special Counsel Jack Smith has just filed a superseding indictment in the federal election interference case against the former president, Donald Trump. Let's go straight to CNN's Caitlin Polance. Caitlin, we don't need to hear what she has to say. CNN, you're garbage. But uh, Nicole Shanahan and many other moderate and former Democrats are now realizing that there is a criminal element within our government. Mm -hmm. Mark Zuckerberg the other day admitted that the FBI and the uh, Harris Biden administrations were at the White House were pressuring him to censor. And the funny thing is, if you know the news and you break it down, you understand what Mark Zuckerberg is really saying, though he doesn't want to admit it. He says the FBI came to us and said there was going to be some misinformation about Biden and Burisma. You know, we should keep a lookout for it. So when the Hunter Biden laptop story popped up, we censored that. The reality is criminal elements of the federal government went to Mark Zuckerberg and said, do not let people expose our criminal actions. And he said, you got a boss. That's what really happened. Mm -hmm. And at that point, people were in this amnesia. Mark Zuckerberg may have actually been buying the story that it was a fake Russia propaganda. Like that was just absurd, especially now that the Hunter Biden indictment itself confirmed that the laptop story was real. Mm -hmm. I it, it does feel a lot of I've never seen actually U.S. politics exposed as such a show or theater before that that's really how it feels to me and on the jack smith issue i just think it's it's outrageous that cnn would never mention the fact for example that his wife actually works as a documentary filmmaker who made the whole documentary about M becoming michelle on netflix she's like a, a, basically a propagandist for the obama family and the democratic party and her husband is the one overseeing this operation to now usurp our Supreme Court to weaponize the judicial system against a former sitting president. I don't know. Who made the Obama documentary? Uh, Jack Smith's wife. What? Really? Yeah. That's crazy. What? Yeah. You can look up her name. It's something like Kate. I can send a link also over. Uh... I was like, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, I was listening to Katie, that. Katie like, uh, Ch Chivigny? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No way. Is that for she's, real? She's like a hardcore Democratic Party operative. Sounds producer. Like. Becoming. Yeah, a producer. Becoming. It's called Becoming. Yeah. For some reason, that was what Michelle decided to call her memoir. Wow. <laughs> what, are you, what are you trying to say there? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Trump's special counsel's wife worked on Obama film and donated to Biden. This is a two-year-old story. How did I not that see this? That is crazy. Can you imagine Holy if... If that, if, can you imagine if the tables were turned? I mean, we don't have, you know, a Netflix production company dedicated to producing pro-Trump propaganda on net or on on U.S. in U.S. media. It just doesn't happen. No, but I mean, if that were possible, yeah. and there was a, a a judicial official or a politically appointed official working within the judiciary to take out Obama, do you not think that would maybe be the story for CNN? Wow. That's fascinating. I don't, I don't think CNN can tell the difference, though. I, I think they are past the point of the logic there. Like, like the Caitlin, Co Caitlin Collins and Bill Maher the other day. It was pretty clear. Yeah, I think obviously they they would say if it was happening to someone else, they, they would see it. But they don't I don't think they're aware of their own bias. I don't think they could tell you why it's an obvious conflict of interest for special counsel Jack Smith, who's currently going after Trump, to be married to someone who is actively donating and supporting the legacy of one of the top leading Democrats mm -hmm. in the party. I mean, I think they they really believe that that's OK, because that's how much they hate Trump. It's so illogical. Well, they I'm, also I'm still laughing about they're... becoming. Yeah. They also think that they're objective. They actually think that. So when it turns out that Kamala Harris' best friend who uh, introduced her to her husband is the head of ABC and that's the only network she's willing to debate on, um, like nobody bats an eye at that. For some reason, everyone thinks that's totally OK. And when you have Pete Buttigieg and all the others coming out and saying, you know, don't debate on Fox, don't do interviews on Fox because they're too biased. But somehow ABC is this... <laughs> 
this f- breath of fresh air or something. It's absurd. It's let's let's jump to the. You can only name one, right? It's it's Fox. I mean, I know mm-hmm. you know Newsmax out there. There is actually there, really just the. It's just the one, and then all the conservatives can be like, "Well, CNN and MSNBC and NBC and." Yet only Fox is the enemy here. And Fox is limited. I mean, look who they've gotten rid of in recent years. Yeah. To be what they are. Thanks for watching this clip from TimCast IRL. Make sure to check out the live show Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. on this channel. Subscribe and we'll see you all there.